Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, except to me of angels messenger and except to me of destinies to make firm establish. So I'm guessing I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I'll introduce you to my wonderful guest, Lorraine Flaherty. Before that, I would like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, travel the present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life regression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, meditation, hypnosis, angel cards, to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guest, uh, today's guest, Lorraine Flaherty, who will be sharing her wisdom about regression and progression, getting clarity, which includes inner child, ancestral and current life work to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, due to a profound interest in the universe and her place in it, Lorraine has been on a spiritual path for most of her life. She is a dedicated seeker of knowledge, widely researching the major world's religions and spiritual traditions to find the wisdom at the heart of each. Based on her discoveries and her training in specific therapeutic interventions, she has pioneered a process called Inner Freedom Therapy, which takes people into the depths of their subconscious to know more about who they really are, where the root of any trauma stems from and how they can heal. As a transformational therapist, author, artist, and university lecturer who teaches clinical hypnosis and accelerated learning to doctors and midwives, she is a practical, grounded, and gets results. Lorraine works at a soul level, exploring the soul's journey with her clients, helping them awaken their creativity as well as dealing with ancestral influences, childhood experiences, the impact their past lives and accrued karma have had on the psyche, and getting clarity about the future. Her work is a little like feng shui for the soul, transmuting unwanted mental, emotional and psychological clutter and creating balance and realignment. She co-hosted the Awake Kwan's YouTube show for a year, which was dedicated to conscious conversations. She runs workshops and retreats globally and is the director of the Past and Future Life Society. She is also very passionate about empowering people. Her first book, Healing with Past Life Therapy, Transformational Journey Through Time and Space, was published by Fintorn Press alongside two guided meditation CDs, Inner Freedom 1 and Inner Freedom 2. So without further delay, hello Lorraine and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? <laughs> Hi Ray, I'm really good, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm glad we could finally get the show recorded. <laughs> so before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you um, that you can ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Lorraine and I want you to be part of this conversation, so please do not be shy. So Lorraine, why don't you tell us about yourself and how regression and progression, getting clarity, um, which includes in a child and a strong current life, can help us? Yeah, I think most of the people in the world today will have been affected at some point or another in their lives by events, particularly in their childhood. and will be triggered or blocked by things that they experience and they can't always find answers for themselves. I think sometimes that people are lost searching and there are so many different routes to healing nowadays and it's amazing, it's wonderful that there are you know all these different options that mm. people can choose but for me the answers lie within. That's the thing that wherever I've looked, whatever I've explored, it always comes back to the same thing that the answers are on the inside and you're not really going to find them outside. So diving in and having good old rummage around in the subconscious, <laughs> as you know, yeah. to find the root of those things is the best way forward always. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, mo it, most, it, most, it most definitely is because yeah, we know the answers. Yeah. Um, and and yeah and and uh, um, you work how I work is you know with helping people find the answers themselves. We just guide yes. them there. Absolutely, and that's why I always say. I, I had a client today who kind of giggled when I said to her, "Just think of me as the GPS. I'm like the sat nav. <laughs> You're I'm driving. Like 
<laughs> you're driving, you're in control, you decide how fast, how slow, if you're to stop at any point, we can reroute, something else comes up, but just just know that you're in control and she she was a little bit nervous about what was going to happen and that just completely reassured her you know but she, mm. she kind of chuckled and then just said okay good I get it now it's fine so yeah being an absolute being a guide and uh knowing the right questions to ask I think is the is the key thing it's it's knowing where to direct them to where in knowing where to navigate to is the the key to it all really yeah so so how did you get in into into all this you know it, I mean, you, you kind of have a spiritual background was it from a very tiny age you, you know how did you get into all of this yeah it was really i mean I, I i kind of wrote in my book that i was born into an irish catholic family but at the same time even though they weren't overly religious but we did have to go to church every sunday and i went to catholic schools but my whole family were kind of in into the esoteric in a way so my dad was into astrology one aunt was into palm reading my mum used to go to spiritual circles and even though when I was much younger at primary school I was never allowed to go to the circles with her but I would certainly go in the car and and you know wait outside with a friend or they, they'd put us in my friend's house so I'd then hear the stories on the way home of what had happened and I was fascinated and I couldn't wait to be able to go myself couldn't wait to be old enough and at the same time, I think I always, I just always knew, I sort of mm -hmm. sensed and could see other things in the world, uh, things that didn't always make sense. So I knew there was another world. I knew there was more than just the 3D world that we experienced. So I would have run-ins with ghosts and spirits and sometimes hear voices. And, you know, my, my grandfather tucked me into bed when I was quite small and with a cousin and uh sounds like quite a normal thing but he died when my dad was about eight yeah and and I'd, I'd always remembered this really fond memory of this really lovely man it was staying at my grandmother's house tucking us into bed and, and he just he said this to you know Shh, don't tell anybody so we didn't and it only it only came to light because it was funny that the family didn't really talk about him too much and I'd never really seen a photograph and I think I was in my late teens when when I saw the first photo of him and I I, I kind of jumped I was like oh I've seen him <laughs> you know this that was him that was and they're like what do you mean you've seen him <laughs> so then I had to tell everybody and uh I think part of me at that point my logical mind and and the family said well you must have been dreaming and then my cousin who's really not remotely into anything spiritual mm. she wasn't open at all came in and said Oh, she went really pale when she heard what we were talking about because she said, but I remember that. And it had been the two of us had been in the bed yeah. together and she remembered it exactly as I got her to describe it. And then that was the evidence really. And I think that's the other thing about me is that because I believed in the other things and I started researching and reading, I'm an avid reader and I read really quickly. So I just read everything that I could that was on the esoteric or the, the you know the mystical the occult stuff and I was never going to be satisfied with just reading about it yeah. so for me I need evidence I need proof and the only way to get proof is to do it myself yeah so I as soon as I could I as soon as I was old enough I signed up with the College of Psychic Studies and I trained in mediumship and I trained in psychic development and I did Reiki training and I, you know just everything you could think of because I wanted the proof yeah I really I really wanted to know I did remote viewing I did all sorts of things and got my evidence got absolute clear concrete evidence and even though it was never going to be what I was going to do I, I kind of and it was uh, when I was younger it was my hobby yeah because I was a hair and makeup artist for years so I've always kind of joked that I started off changing how people felt by changing how they looked on the outside and now yeah. I do it on the inside but you're already a counsellor in a way you're already you're already a form of therapist because yeah. you are there you are the witness to people's lives it's safe for them to open up and to share with you their troubles and their problems and I would never give people advice but mm. I had a way of helping people to see things from different perspectives yeah to actually see things from the other person's perspective so that they could get clarity 
on you know what was what was really going on so eventually after 20 years of hairdressing uh i think i realized that i was done i'd got as far as i could possibly go with it and so yeah i mean there's a little there was a little a short period of time a couple of years where i thought i was going to go into acting which was something yeah. i dreamt of doing but actually just the performance stuff led me to realize i wanted to teach i wanted to share wisdom i wanted to share knowledge it wasn't about pretending to be somebody else yeah and then at that point i then started seeking in earnest what am i going to do what is it and as you do you ask the universe give me a sign yeah because i was struggling and then just randomly, I ended up on a seven-day NLP practitioner course because it just kept coming up over and yeah. over again, NLP, NLP. And then on the second day, we did hypnosis. And that was it. That was it. Yeah. I mean, I was literally, it was like choirs of angels doing hallelujah because I just absolutely knew that was it. It was the key that I'd been looking yeah. for that allowed you to get in and, and find the information. So, yeah, and that was, that was about 20 years ago. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't stopped ever since. <laughs> still searching and seeking. Still searching and seeking. Still rummaging in people's subconscious and my own. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so where did the hypnosis lead after that? I mean, was that when you um, uh, worked out about progression and regression or was that a little bit later? Uh, so I then, when I kind of carried on, because I worked with Paul McKenna and Richard Bandler, the co-creator of NLP, for about yeah. seven, eight years, I think, on their assisting team. But in between that, I went and did like a, a nearly three-year uh, clinical hypnosis diploma and practitioner diploma. And because it was clinical hypnosis and it was very practical, uh, they weren't really too open to the spiritual stuff. Or no. the esoteric stuff and I waited I think the past life regression module was right at the end and I was so excited I was so looking forward to it and it was my favorite lecturer that was teaching so I was really excited and because he was really straight and very yeah. good at explaining things and he came out and his first words were I don't believe in past lives oh so I was devastated and he then went on to do the most extraordinary demonstration and had the whole room in tears because it was so profound and the guy was never the same again afterwards I mean it really helped him it really yeah. shifted stuff and so for me the past life stuff was like a guilty pleasure yeah and we'd done some future stuff we'd done some future pacing and we'd done sessions going in and looking at different versions of the future mm. uh, but again I think back then I was more interested in getting to the root of problems yes I was more interested in how you could heal things. So I decided to explore the past life stuff on my own as research mm. and just to see how it could work and, and you know, what, what could come up. And I realized that actually it was in many ways more profound than just the straight clinical stuff. Yeah. And so I kind of almost did it on the side. As I said, it was, it was something I didn't really advertise or talk about. It was just, you know, word of mouth. And then eventually what happened over time was that people just more and more started to want to explore that. And the more I worked with it and the more it evolved, and because my sessions started at two hours and now they're three, sometimes four, because I really dig deep. Yeah. And uh, I suppose in a way my sessions are a little bit more like a life between lives mm -hmm. where it really is about what the soul chose to work on and karmic contracts that are created between people that you adjust and change so it's very in-depth and yeah and I mean at that point the most ridiculous changes were happening in people's lives and it was when they were coming back and saying but my father's different or my partner's different or yeah. you know my mother and my dog and my you know the Budgie. next door neighbor exactly they're all different how's this happening and I thought I don't know I really don't know <laughs> and uh and it just I started to see that there was so much more scope with the regression work. And even with the, you know, over the years, I've kind of developed my inner child work. So originally it was just go in and meet the inner child and create a safe space and make them feel loved mm -hmm. and safe. But because I'm a white person and because for me, I see the work of being a bit like gardening. 
in yeah. that you can you can take out the weeds and you can make something you can make a garden look beautiful but if you don't get to the roots and you don't get to the real origin of why that grew there in the first place why people behave like that in the first place then it's going to come back somewhere yeah. along the line so now my inner child sessions are three or three and a half hours long because I go right back down through the ancestral line and the beliefs and unpicking everything and uh that was the point at which I started writing the book because the results were so amazing yeah and uh and then I, well, and it was and you've trained with Anne as well haven't you so it was yeah. Anne Josh who then really kind of kick-started the future life progression as a thing and uh so I did some training with her and then of course that then made complete sense that when yeah. people are shifting that you've got to clear the past you've got to deal with all the trauma from childhood but then if you don't know where you're going if you don't have clarity about the choices that you want to make and the direction that you want to go in then often people aren't stuck because there's something holding them back they just don't know which choice to make and yes. then what usually people do if they don't know shall I do this or this or this then they do nothing because they can't make up their mind so and I, I think I might have adapted which you know, I tend to usually do adapt things and do it my way uh so with the future life stuff uh I tend to give people glimpses of all the different options that they're thinking about mm. so lots of different choices so if they think should I write a book or should I focus on this or should I focus on that I let them go in and see yeah. what all these different options are going to turn out like and um and then of course people at the end are usually able to go oh, okay all right and it might be a combination of a few of them but yeah. definitely it's the it's the being able to say no to things because they open a door and you know their unconscious mind just goes nah <laughs> no <Yeah. laughs> that just feels terrible I'm not do I'm not going anywhere near that <laughs> uh, but that's brilliant <laughs> yeah and that one's brilliant okay I love that and it's when the tears happen and they're like ah, that you know you've hit the right spot yeah so yeah so that's so it's quite exciting and again so the inner freedom therapy you know that kind of evolved because it, I realized that you had to cover all of these different steps yeah as well as some of the you know processing how the mind works and how your thinking is you know happening behind the scenes and unpick you know helping people to unpick the unhealthy or unhelpful habits and ways of behaving that they may have created over the years and if you get all of that sorted out then you're free because there's yeah. nothing then there's nothing limiting you so th the only thing that would get in your way is if you decide not to go forward but you're not restricted. So that's how yeah. that all came about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it's brilliant. Um, I, you know, I'm the, the same as you, you know, I, you know, my I've always been a, well, why does this work? How, you know, yeah. why, why, what, you, you, you know, I, I need to know, I need to know the answers. And yes. that, it's like, Oh, great. That, 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 that works. So I don't believe everything that I'm, you know, every therapy that I've ever been told about. <sighs> Uh -huh. <laughs> Doesn't it work? Yeah, no, I won't go that. I won't. I won't go. I won't go with that one. Um, so, but what's interesting um, in what you're saying? So, you know, you, you say you peel you peel back the layers. How do people mm. get these layers in the first place? Well, I think that what happens is that the minute there's some sort of trauma. Or some sort of upset particularly when you're a child that there is a need to protect self and in the way an adult would protect themselves would be to kind of step into fight or flight mm. and either you know stand their ground or, or say no or get the hell out of there you know the fight back or get away yeah. children can't do that they're reliant on their caregivers so I think what happens with children in times of trouble is that they go into the freeze mode which is the th third component of it really and then they just it's like a part dissociates and it's like a fragment of them will retreat within and then you know almost like a shield going up to protect them and the way I see it is as though that part of them stays at that age for the rest of their life constantly looking for danger 
Yeah. And then every time they find a behavior that mirrors what they experience, they go, oh, see, told you. And it just compounds the fear. So it often builds as someone gets older. Because sometimes people say to me, well, why am I still worried about that now? And I said, because you've been looking for evidence your whole life. And you keep finding it because you're looking for it as well. And yeah. if you're looking for what doesn't work, that's what you're going to find in front of you. And if you're looking for what does work, you know, you tend to ignore those bits and you will, you will see that. So I think that's what happens. I think that in the early years, a program gets set and then it's totally unconscious. A person will have no idea that they're doing it. And if they generated a belief in those early years as a result of what was happening to them, that, it was their fault or that they weren't good enough or if they had been different then they would have been protected or loved or looked after then that belief is also something that is going to is just going to keep perpetuating and they will do things and then fear that they're not good enough will stop them from going the whole way with it so they'll fail or not succeed in you know the way that they should have done and then again it's reinforced they go see knew you weren't good enough yeah. not realizing that it was actually their belief that was causing it to happen and then it keeps happening it's like a you know it's this horrible little loop that they get stuck into and so patterns keep repeating mm. because also energetically they're going to and again it's unconscious but they're going to attract people and situations that will fulfill their prophecy so if they yeah. don't believe that they're good enough, if they believe that they deserve to be treated badly, then the partners that they bring into their life, even if they seem great at the beginning, are eventually going to turn. And they'll yeah. go, oh, see, uh, you know, and then if they get rid of that one and then they bring another one in that seems, and it, the same thing will happen and happen again and again until they actually go in and identify, look, what's at the root of this? Why am I attracting this? And once they go in and have a look, and find out exactly what beliefs they've been carrying and what they've been holding on to, then they have a they have a chance of yeah. actually experiencing things differently. Yeah, and it's yeah, it, 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 it's it's um, yeah, but I, I don't think a lot of people realise realise mm. that that they they carry that because they think, well, I dealt with it in my childhood, you know, I dealt yeah. with it as a teenager, you know, I had some therapy or. In, you know I took some drugs or I went out you, you know I got yeah. sorted out so so yeah it can't still be affecting me because I'm <laughs> yeah, I know. exactly not realizing that the program's still running behind the scenes and it's only you can't change it unless you go to the subconscious because you can't use willpower you can't use the logical mind to actually okay. change these things because they're default settings and so no matter how part, hard a person works to change things while life is okay and they're not being presented with a big challenge, they can probably manage it. They can probably handle it. But the minute something happens to throw them off guard and they haven't got the ability to, to, you know, to stay in their willpowered new path, they just slip back to the old way and they'll go immediately back to the old way of, of behaving. And then, of course, once they start it again, then it takes a long while to unravel it so yeah. much quicker to just go in and you know identify where did this start <laughs> what was the root of this and it's often a massive shock for people when they discover what it is because I think a lot of people will think back they'll think about an event in their childhood that they can remember you know and often people's memories just because the memory banks are so full up they can't remember everything yeah which doesn't mean that it's suppressed or blocked it's just too much data yeah but sometimes people will remember an event and think, oh, it was that. It was definitely that. That's where it started. And I think, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, well, we'll see. Let's just find out. And then often yeah. it's way earlier than they think. You yeah. know? And I mean, I've even had clients go back to the time in the womb where mum was experiencing fear or trauma and they've picked that up as a child and they come into the world thinking it isn't safe. Yeah. And then they're on high alert, you know, and then they end up as somebody with anxiety and stress. And of course, there can be physiological symptoms that go with that, that no doctor can explain, that no one can understand. And once you deal with the root of the trauma, suddenly all of those things can just fall away. And it's crazy, really, what can actually yeah. happen. 
Yeah, and it, it's, um, it's it's also um, past lives as well, isn't it? That can um, can have an impact. You you bring that those issues in, into the into the present. You do absolutely, and they will always mirror what a person is experiencing in their current life, the lifetimes they go to, because the soul will have agreed to work on a test or a challenge, and whether that challenge is to see if they can love themselves even if nobody else has or even if you know, I mean I had a client the other day and what was it she'd signed up for to experience it was it was like the most I can't even remember the phrase but it was the most intense her like right the the the, the, the most deepest level of hurt that you could experience to see if she could survive through it. But, but, but also just to experience it because she'd had lifetimes where there'd been great joy and, and peace and, and she'd experienced all these other things. So she wanted to go the complete other end of the scale. And she did, you know, she went into a lifetime, which was just, <laughs> it was yeah. just awful, awful, awful. And died at the end of the, you know, got to the end of the lifetime and felt like she had been a complete and utter failure, complete and utter failure. So that was the belief, you know, oh God, you know, I just suffered. I didn't achieve anything. I never managed to get out of this hole that I'd fallen into. And, you know, what a waste of a life. And then to get to the other side and by asking the right questions and allowing her to go to the healing place and finding out, well, what did you sign up for? Yeah. And the quest was to know this unbelievable pain and suffering and so there was this just this sort of silence for a moment and then this awareness that well you did that didn't you <laughs> you did it and she's like yeah so you didn't fail at all you actually succeeded completely that's what you were meant to do and that revelation of holy shit even the really awful things that we experience are maybe exactly what we signed up for yeah but it's our perception of it you know, we, we tend to judge. We're often very quick to judge what's going on. And if we step back from the judgment of right and wrong or good and bad and how things should be, then I think all of us would have a very different experience of life. Especially when people are so keen to judge other people. Yeah. And, and think, but, you know, even when I see homeless people, you know, I salute them because I think, okay, well, whatever you've signed up for wasn't an easy one. So right. I salute your bravery and your courage. And if you ask me for help, I'm not going to give you money, but I will buy you food. Yeah. Uh, but I'm never going to go up to somebody because I think that their life would be better if they did something else. No. You know, I, I totally recognize you cannot change things for people. We have no right to determine what is going to make a person's life good or bad or right or wrong no we have to step back and it's hard and especially if it's someone that you care about or somebody that you love and you see them struggling and you think you know what it is that they need well actually you don't no because <laughs> the struggle might be exactly that so i think what happens with the past lives is that people really get a sense of that yeah they really get a sense that it's more, it's a bigger picture, a much, much bigger picture than they ever realised. And so I think people are empowered because they see that, oh, hang on, somewhere in this, I've chosen this life and I chose my family and I chose these difficulties that I'm going through. And of course we have free will. We can ignore yeah. the challenges. We can, we can just go do something else if we want to. Except that if we do that, then we're just going to have to come back and do it again. Exactly. And it could be worse the next time. So I always think, oh, you know, as challenging as this is, let's just get through it. Let's just find the solution. Let's find the answer to it. And then I definitely don't have to come back and, and you know, do this thing again. So, yeah, it's important work. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's, it's very important. You know, that's why I've, you know, I've had over 300 past lives because I've done a lot of work because this uh -huh. time is my last time. I'm not coming back again. It's so brilliant. <laughs> It's like, yes, I don't have to come back if I don't want to. I don't want to come back. <laughs> everything. Leave me alone now. Let me go back and be part of the universe. <laughs> Except that sometimes I think that we get there 
and I think that being a lovely cosmic part of the universe and floating around in bliss is really nice but I don't know about you but I think after a while I'd probably get bored <laughs> I, I probably would but then I've been in, I've been into a future lifetime and that is exactly what I am doing so <laughs> <laughs> brilliant <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know it's like yeah i need a long rest now 300 past lives since the beginning of time i think uh -huh. I, need to, I need a little bit of a little bit of uh, yeah. a black hole that's <laughs> exciting you, and that is exciting being being a you know being part of a black hole uh, yeah all the dimensions and every, oh yeah uh, yeah, that, that, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Actually. I'll I'll see you out there. <laughs> yeah, let's go and play with the black hole and some stars and the universe and. Oh, yeah, and well, it'd be good to know what they actually are as exactly. well. Exactly. Well, yeah, exactly, because that's it. You can actually find out exactly what it is without yeah. relying, you know, on quantum physics and everything like that. You can actually be part of it. So you go, yeah. Well, and that's how it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see, I'll see you up there. Um, so, so when we're looking at um, the future, yes. Um, so we've kind of like cleared all, all this this past life, this child um, child stuff, and when we look at the future, you know, do it just can we uh, you know looking at the future? Could we then look see what issues are affecting us in our life in the current time, so we actually don't have to re go through that. Yeah, uh, obviously, a lot of the time when people come in to know about the future, it's because they're stuck or because they're not sure. And sometimes it's really obvious that there is something that needs to be shifted before they can go and look in the future. Because if they've got a limiting belief or something that's really stopping them from moving forward, then sometimes I will jump backwards before I jump forwards oh, with yeah. them. Yeah. So, obviously we can set it up you know these are time portals anyway so i'll just have a corridor on the other side of the building that's going backwards and then yeah. the corridors or you know the doors on this side are going are going forward Forward. yeah and then you clear stuff and then once they've once they've had the realization what i would then have them do is actually allow the new version of them that has the new belief rather than the version of them that's come in because the version of them that came in would still be holding that yeah negative belief or behavior and so it's almost like creating a hologram of the new version of them which they then step into and then step into their future based on this new perspective based on the healed version of them and that tends to work pretty well yeah that, that tends to uh to really shift things and whenever you change those beliefs then the expectations of the future kind of elevate anyway yeah and, and i mean i think sometimes i've actually and a, a lot of the time if i'm changing a habit uh you know i would have done the future stuff anyway so i was working with somebody the other day for weight loss and uh obviously there were a few habits and things that she needed to change but she was still a little bit like yeah but i love my you know, whatever it was, yeah. my chocolate or whatever. And uh, and I said, well, that's all well and good because, you know, the part of you that is craving this and that's wanting you to have it believes in that moment in time that it is helping you to feel better. So what this time what I did is I asked the part that was responsible for the chocolate eating behavior, the overeating chocolate, because I didn't want to ban chocolate. Oh, not, God, good no. dark cho not, not good dark chocolate anyway. Make, you, make your own, it's so easy. I know minutes. exactly, exactly. Yeah, very easy. We'll swap recipes later. Okay. Uh, but get them to bring along the part that's responsible for the, the the bad habit. And then what I do is that I have them float into the future, probably ten or fifteen years in the future, where they haven't changed the habit, where they've continued with this habit, so that they get to step in and see what their health is like and what their body's like and how they're feeling emotionally and mentally and just what's happened as a result and it's never ever been that they go oh well I'm feeling great they always go oh yeah. well, I'm heavy and I feel like shit and I'm lonely and uh, okay well and then what that does is it opens the eyes of the part that thinks it's making them feel better because long term 
it's absolutely not. So there can be no denial from the part that's running that action mm. that actually it's detrimental. And then what I'll do is I'll get them to go five, ten years into the future with the same part, go and have a look what's going to happen if they reduce it or, you know, make it manageable or replace some of it with a healthier habit and then get them to think about what that healthier habit might be. And actually then promote the part that was responsible for making them feel good. You know, give that part a responsibility to support them and, and help them and encourage them. So that could be really powerful as well. That that really works. Yeah. And then, of course, they come back and it's like, then they have a conversation with the part to go, well, what's it going to be? And, you know, thankfully, I've never yet had a part that's gone, keep the chocolate. <laughs> 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 they're usually in full agreement okay all right look you know it wasn't really working not quite the way i thought it was so let's do something else yeah so yeah and it's very powerful because then it's that part that's running behind the scenes you know yeah. that's the part that's at the unconscious level and what i've learned about human nature is that if you give the right instructions whilst in that unconscious realm then yeah the the inner workings of the person will respond pretty well to it yeah yeah and yeah. again and again it's it's like you were saying earlier it's their self that is actually making making the decisions yeah and, absolutely uh, yeah you know because when when but you know i have people come to me to go into the future and will and i you know i i always go to whatever issue you know they want to and sometimes they can't go into the future because it's subconsciously saying, no, we're going back. So they come from future life right. and they're doing the past life. <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah and absolutely. Then. And this is the thing that I always work by and I'll always say to my clients, I'm led by your higher mind. So yeah. we might have an idea of where we're going or what we need to do, but actually the first thing I'm going to ask is that higher mind is the one that directs us. That it's your higher mind that will show us where we need to go. And yeah. sometimes I will just give them one door and get them to go through that door and they will step into whether it's their current life, whether it's a past life, whether it's a future experience that they need to learn from. And then we just see where they end up. Yeah. And of course they'll always end up exactly where they need to be. Yeah. 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 We, we, cheer, um, we, we try to find as well. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's absolutely brilliant and it just goes to show, you know, how wonderful our own um our own mind is you know how amazing yeah. our consciousness subconscious um, yeah. is when we actually really get in get into it and you know and explore it and, and find out about it yeah yeah i mean it's such a a vast treasure house really and of course that's the other thing is that i think people always think that this work is about finding the root of problems or going into the, the trauma to heal it. But of course we have to remember that there are huge resources that are in the mind as well. So I, I teach, as you mentioned earlier, I teach medical students and one of the things that I do with them, it's called accelerated learning. And it's like a revision week or two weeks uh, module that I get with them. And most of the medical students have bad habits because they've been not long out of school so when they were studying yeah. for their a levels you know they cram everything in at the last minute and then regurgitate it back onto a page and they've managed to get by doing that but they're all stressed out of their minds and wired on coffee yeah and so when i point out to them that most of them probably don't remember any of that information because it's sat in their short-term memory just long enough to get it on the page yeah and i ask all of them how many of you think that the stuff that you're learning now would be quite beneficial for you to remember for the rest of your life and you know these hands very sheepishly yeah. go up and then they say well maybe you need a different strategy now for learning but of course what most of them have done have generated really really bad perceptions of exams you know revision exams yeah anything to do with study it's like Ugh. i'm like well you're going to be in medical school for the next six or seven years do you not think give yourself a break and actually give yourself permission to enjoy it you know how would it be if you looked forward to it every day because you saw it as a stepping stone towards your success. And they all go, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. So then I put them into a mindful hypnosis state. And then I asked them to go back and remember like, a time when they felt really successful. To go back and remember something they've accomplished and something that makes them feel good. And to relive that memory, to relive that good feeling. And then get them to attach that good feeling to revising. And then attach the good feeling to exams. 
and then attach that good feeling to the success that they can achieve in the future. And through repetition, we just keep doing it and then just keep getting them to find these really good memories. And it just retrains the mind. It just resets it all. So it's, it's a bit like Pavlov and his dogs, you know, when he yeah. fed the dogs and rang a bell and, you know, the dog would salivate. So it's just resetting. So finding the positive moments, because most people don't take time to celebrate their success. No, they don't. They're either fixing problems or they're just trying to get on with things. But unless you actually acknowledge and remember the good things that have happened, it's really hard to believe that you can actually achieve things. Yeah. So if you, if you link those two things together, give yourself moments of praise. Give yourself a tap on the back or a pat on the back, whichever one that is. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, to celebrate. And it's, it's a reminder. It's a convincer. Because each time they remember that they've already had success, then achieving success in the future starts to sound simpler and easy and more believable. Mm. So, so sometimes I do in a session take people into either a positive past life, or sometimes I will take them into a future life where they have already achieved and accomplished the things that they want to do yeah. so a lifetime where they're already experiencing or they're already doing yeah, whatever the living, doing. living the way that yeah exactly living the way they they want to live and uh that's very powerful too yeah. Yeah. yeah although sometimes at the end of a future life session i do say to them okay you can dive into a future future life now so that you can just get a glimpse of where you're going to be and where you're going to end up and you know the the next and of, but of course, remembering that time is only linear on the earth plane. It's not linear when we get to the other side, but no. most people don't really process that anyway. But it's really funny because sometimes you tell them to go to a future life and they're like, oh, I'm in 1800 and something. Oh, well, how did that actually, that's not future <laughs> in the linear, but, but that was the life they needed to go into. And their higher self went, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, actually, this is, so I, yeah, I, I let go really yeah <laughs> just, just gonna go wherever it is that you need to exactly <laughs> technically in the 18th century they they you know they could be they could have um, found a brilliant uh, medical thing that yeah. they wouldn't find in the future that they can bring into the present now that was that was long forgotten about yeah that absolutely. was actually helping help helping the here <laughs> now so yeah it makes <laughs> absolute sense that they might go back instead of forward <laughs> yeah yeah, absolutely. And I suppose if you're going back to the 1800s, sometimes that felt futuristic, especially if mm -hmm. people were going off to the, you know, the, well, new worlds that weren't yeah. actually new worlds because there were already people living there. But yeah, so for some people that might have almost seemed that it was completely different yeah. and new and yeah, and adventures. Yeah. Yeah, but it's fascinating. And I think... Day after day, I just am so blown away by human beings, really. Yeah. The strength that they have and, and what they can endure and what they can tolerate and what they choose to go through. And I, I think a lot of the time as well that, you know, we have our family on earth, but I think we do have a family in the spirit realms. We'll, we'll have our soul family that we work with. And I see sometimes that, some souls will actually volunteer to do the really icky, you yeah. know, unpleasant jobs because it saves other people in the soul group having to do it. So again, when people say to me, well, why on earth would somebody choose a life of suffering? Why would they choose a life where they have to really go through yeah. some awful stuff? And I say, well, it probably means that somebody else doesn't have to. So the braver the soul, the more likelihood there is that they're actually going to choose these really difficult challenges so again when i see people struggling and suffering i just really think wow brave well done yeah salute yeah. You. <laughs> you know salute you for that it's exactly and just and just send you lots lots of love um, lots yeah. of hug and love and you know blessings um that, that you know you 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 know you 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 can you achieve what you're supposed to be achieving yeah yeah absolutely and i think knowing who we are and knowing that this isn't the only life also i found with so many people means that a huge fear that a lot of people have is the fear of death yeah 
And when you do this work, because there is no real beginning and there is no real end to it, and because in the sessions people go to that point and are able to experience what it's like to leave the body, you can't really have a fear of, of the end anymore. No. I mean, I know I certainly don't at all, you know, whatever, no, I whatever ideas I may have had in the younger years, but having been witness to so many endings of lives and again, so many of my own, that it just, you know, yeah. it, it's almost like going in and watching a movie, isn't it? And then the movie comes to an end and you go to the cinema the following week and then there's another one and then there's another yeah. one and another one. So you, you sort of, yeah. In a way, it becomes yeah. You're going natural. on to a new event. Yeah, you're going on a new adventure. You're you're yeah. doing you're doing something new. It's like, oh, okay, so I'm yeah, I'm I'm dead. So what am I going to be doing next? <laughs> yeah. like, you know, yeah. What what story am I going to create? Yeah, yeah. Where shall I go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. See, everyone should have that mind. Everyone should have that mind. mind. Yeah. This is it. And I think that if more people explored other lifetimes and other experiences it's a bit like travel isn't it so yeah. I know when I was younger I learned so much by going to other countries mm. and meeting people and, and immersing myself into different cultures but this takes it to a whole other limit because in a way there isn't any limit to where you can go and what you can experience and so it just gives you such a greater understanding yeah. of how the world operates, how human beings operate. And yeah, I mean, there's nothing more exciting than suddenly ending up in ancient Egypt or, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Rome. Or the universe or, or another <laughs> planet. Yeah, that's happened too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there's no carbon footprint. No, exactly, exactly. It's absolutely safe travel. No one's getting harmed in the process. And you can clear your karma. You yes. can clear, yeah, you can get out there and balance karma, which when you think that we're all connected on some level, quantum level, we're mm. all connected. Because I also think that a lot of people say to me, well, why don't, why, you know, people say live in the now. Why would you go backwards or even forwards? You know, why don't you just live in the present? And I say, well, if there's stuff that needs to be resolved, then living in the present can be really uncomfortable. So spending a few hours actually going back and having a look and healing things in my mind is a really good idea. It's like you wouldn't drive around in a car without having it serviced. No, exactly. You didn't take care. If you didn't change the oil, if you didn't look at the running and, and you know what was going on in the background of the car, eventually it would just, it would pack up. And I think this is a, you know, we are walking around in a vehicle. Our body is a vehicle and it yeah. has accumulated loads of stuff over the years and it does need maintenance. Yeah, exactly. And you know, we do have to go in and fix these things and take care of, you know, we, we're always told to take care of the external body, but so few people recognise how important it is to do maintenance and to look after the mind. Yeah. It's yeah. essential. It's absolutely essential. So even going in and doing this work, I think not only do we need it, but also because we are all connected, then it's it's not an indulgence it's actually a really essential part of our growth but each time we heal we're healing on behalf of everybody exactly. you know so it makes a difference we're all tied into this same complicated woven web yeah. of you know energy and energy absolutely so it's not an indulgence i think it's essential yeah yeah i i, I totally agree agree with you um, because when in, you know I've seen when I when I've had clients and they've um, sort of like um, uh, healed their past, so they've created the future and then the present. Be because they their energy is so different, then it affects the people around them, and the people around exactly. them notice, and they start to change as well. And when they're changing, people notice they're changing, and other people. Yeah. it's like the, it's like the ripple effect that yeah. that just multiplies. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, and that kind of loops back to what I was saying at the beginning, you know, the, the excitement at seeing these transformations externally. Now, I remember a few years ago, I was teaching and I was doing a demo on one of the um, subjects, or one of the students, and she'd admitted that she was really sceptical about past lives. 
really skeptical and she'd come because she was curious so we did this session and she went into a lifetime where there had been a rift with somebody and they found the root of it and they understood why they had challenged each other and it was a test to see if they could love each other no matter what yeah and it transpired that the person that she'd had the rift with was someone who'd been a very good friend in this lifetime and they had repeated the same pattern and something had happened and it had been about five years previously and they'd fallen out completely so she was really shocked when she said oh my god it's you know it's my friend that i don't speak to anymore so in the past life they got to resolve the problem and they healed it and they forgave each other and they were able to you know release yeah. that karmic thread put a new contract in place that said that from now on they would support each other that they would be there for each other they didn't have to test each other anymore yeah and she came in the next morning and said i mean i'm done that's it i'm i'm a convert i'm a convert i'm i'm totally i'm totally committed to this now i said what happened she said i got home and half an hour later my phone rang and it was the girl from the past life who i haven't spoken to for five years saying you've been in my mind so much and I've just realized that what we went through was just ridiculous and our friendship was way too important to end on such a ridiculous note. So I, let, please let's meet, please let's talk about it. I just, you know, I forgive you, need you to forgive me. Can we, you know, I miss you. Can we be friends? And she said to everybody, well, it could be a coincidence. It, it, it's entirely possible that it could be a coincidence and everyone just went, you know, eyes rolled. She went, I know, that's why I'm here and that's why I'm in and that's it. I'm, you know, I'm done. That, I, shall, I shall add it to my repertoire. I mean, so, yeah. you know, it, yeah. was, it was just perfect. Yeah, ab 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 absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a thing for sharing that. Now, as everyone knows, um, I like to, um, every week, I always like to invite my guests um to let me know if they would like me to pull them them and the people watching an angel card or whether they want me to do a mini guided meditation so rain what would you like me to do oh i think maybe an angel card would be lovely <laughs> i like this I, I don't know why i actually say meditation or angel card i really just say i'm, I'm just going to do angel cards <laughs> Everyone always does them, and I love doing them. I love doing the angel cards um, as as well. So, um, so yeah. So, just give them a quick cleanse and a bless. And again, um, you know, when I do the cards, it's what we need to know for our highest good at this moment yes. in time. Because again, Perfect. like you, I work with the past to clear it, so you can be present. Yeah. Work with the future, so you can sort that out, and you can you can actually. So, it's what you need to know for your highest good. So. What's the rain and all those watching need to know for their highest good in this moment of time. What's the rain and all those watching need to know for their highest good in this moment of time. Okay. Which is quite interesting with <laughs> Begin now, take your first step. Oh, there you go. The, begin the start of the yellow brick road. <laughs> ex 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 exactly. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's basically saying, you know, take, you know, begin now to start your life anew, you know, yes. to, to, to start it, you, you know, you've worked on your, you know, work on, you've worked on your past, you know where your future's going. So, so start on that path now and actually take your first step. And mm. um, so, so, so for you, that, that's, that's, that's... I actually that's, have, my ru I have my ruby slippers on my mug. There you go, <laughs> see? It, it, you know, that's how it works. And for those watching Brilliant. that haven't done anything with your past or the future, this really is kind of like saying, you know, begin now to start clearing your past. Yeah. and looking at your future or um, exploring your future so that you can um, now be fully in the present so take that step yes and, brilliant and that uh, yeah i love the way these work out it's like yeah, the, the angels just always come out with doing those perfect cards for whoever needs them at, yeah. the, at this moment in time um so lorraine um before we wrap up do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers The greatest insight I think I could give would be to recognize that everything in your life 
is there for a reason and that it's a gift and that if you can move from feeling as though life is doing stuff to you to recognizing that you've chosen it and therefore to have gratitude for everything and everyone it means that you'll end up with more things to be grateful for because you get more of what you focus on yeah yeah absolutely wise words you know and it's something i do before um, as soon as i get into bed i look at my whole day and i look at what are um what achievements i've during the day and what i'm grateful yeah. for yeah um you know even if it's like my umbrella didn't fly off in the wind you know I got wet, you know and anything like that i'm you know any any little thing you know i say yeah, yeah i'm grateful for that yeah absolutely i try and make it my first thought when i wake up in the morning yeah 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 i do it before i go to bed you do it when you wake up so everyone yeah. watching, you can do it whenever you want during the day exactly anytime any um, attitude at any time exactly exactly <laughs> and if you're in if you're having to spend money um have gratitude for the money you spend if you exactly. spend, have gratitude for the money you get indeed yeah and, uh, so everyone, I hope you enjoyed the, um, this show and found it insightful. And the words of wisdom Lorraine has given you will help you further on your journey. So Lorraine, if people want to um, connect with you, how do they do that? Yeah, so they can go via my website, which is innerjourneys.co.uk. And uh, there's lots of information and videos and yeah, lo loads of stuff on there. And they'll find all my details. Excellent. And what I'll do is I'll put those details um, on, on the post as, as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life and need help finding your destiny, getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute um, uh, video via Skype or Messenger um, to work out how I can help you with your destiny. And um, just to let you know that the online membership that I'm going to um, be creating is uh, um, on the way. The website's being upgraded as we speak. And of course, um, I've still got a few places left on the um, uh, Glastonbury retreat um, to take charge of your destiny that I'm going to be running down in Glastonbury, surprise, surprise, um, between the 4th and the 7th of September. So please do contact me if you want to um, come along on that and find out more details. Um, it is um, only eight people and places are limited and it is getting a little bit um, uh, people, well, people are wanting to, uh, to join in now. So um, I look forward to all, to all joining me next week um um with uh with my guest and lorraine thank you so much for being on my show today it's been absolutely brilliant thank you so much and we're going to have to have the conversation again in, in the future yeah, love to. To come back again <laughs> be my pleasure would love um, to thank you for having and, me and we can go we can go every anywhere we want then <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> so everyone thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next week